We have security risk, and I'm the head of security in the region. So my preoccupation is whatever security risk we have, we put in measures to arrest that security risk. You know, it's not all the things we can do within the short term, but there are some we can do immediately. For instance, I'm going to check why the uh, sprinkler did not switch on when the fire started. I don't think it should take months. We can look at it today, tomorrow, and see what we can do. Uh, smoke detectors, maybe if they were not functional. Do we need months? We don't need months. There are some of them we can put in place before we ask them to come back. Because you don't know. If you ask them to come at 12 o'clock, and around 12 o'clock, another fire starts, and the sprinklers are not working, what happens? So anything that borders on security, that one as head of the regional security council, I can take decision before reporting to anybody. The proposal is that it must be closed for minimum three days so that we look at them. If you look and we cannot solve the basic, basic ones, it could be even extended to maybe one week. So it's been a long night for victims of the KJT fire incident and we have even told some of them had to pass the night around just to make sure that everything is in place. Um, several shops have been destroyed. This morning we've been able to count about 33 of them. And mostly traders here do in combustible materials. So maybe that's how come the fire was that intense yesterday. All right, so that's uh, Ibrahim Abubakar um, earlier today when the minister visited the place. He's still with us uh, to find out what exactly are the views of those traders who've been affected. Ibrahim, good afternoon, if you can hear me. So we've heard the minister. What has the response been from the traders? Well, the traders are not happy with that because most of them are still in shock. Some of them, because for now, they do not even know whether they have been affected or not. And Others who want to also see the extent of damage, whether they will be able to salvage some of their property. So just a few minutes ago, a number of them from there, they were insisting that they should be allowed in there to at least see for themselves what was happening. You know, yesterday, when the management issued a statement, they said the market should be shut down from 6 a.m. to 12 p.m. So they were hoping that by 12, the place would be open up for them. Um, just a a few minutes ago, I'm told that all the market or the victims who left there have been able to enter because they were piling pressure onto the police to allow them to enter. They are not going there to conduct any trading activity. In fact, the minister himself, when he engaged the leadership, he later decided that well, they can allow them to go there and assess things for themselves, but not to conduct any trading activity. For trading activity, looking at three days or even possibly one week. By that time, the fire service personnel have been able to get ample time to conduct their investigation. Currently, we have fire officers in there. We have police personnel also in there. And we have um, those who are also, they are workers of the facility trying to tidy up the place for the traders to be able to come back. So, so far, we've been able to count since morning when we came shops have been affected and others who we don't know because the place has not been open up to whether indeed the items in there have been affected or not. Hmm. All right, uh, Ibrahim, thank you so much uh, for that quick wrap of what's been happening at the KJT market in Kumasi, which was guarded by fire yesterday. About 30 shops affected. Subsequent bulletins will update you on what next line of action will be taken both by the traders and uh, the um, city authorities in ensuring that that does not recur.